Asking yourself the question on why you love it and why you do it, for me, it's just, I'm so addicted to getting better at it. I feel like there's no such thing as a perfect surfer, so for me, I'm always trying to find ways to, to get better, and that's the most addictive part of it. Surfing as a whole is, you know, it teaches you a lot of life lessons. The ocean's very humbling and, you know, it teaches you to be very adaptive and it's a, such a good sport to be really present and just enjoy nature. That's why I think not only myself, but a lot of other surf fans love that reason for it. I wasn't overly focused on one specific thing as a child. You know, I played a lot of soccer and, and then the surfing came into my life. And I think when I was a kid, it was, it was more doing a lot of different sports to then figure out what I liked the best. And surfing won at the end of the day. <laughs> Hey, I'm Connor O'Leary and I'm a professional surfer. The first time I started surfing or my dad pushed me on a wave was at up in Queensland, a place called Noosa. And as a kid growing up, I was pretty scared of the ocean and scared of waves and, and all that. So this day was really nice and small and clean and jumped on my dad's board and he pushed me on a few waves and that's how it all began. I spent a lot of time as a kid coming up to Lennox. We used to have these like junior events up here once a year and the waves up here there's a lot of locations on the world tour that are very similar and for my own career living up here to be able to go the next step and keep improving every year was a no-brainer for me and it was a very scary move at the start but looking back you know it's very very grateful that I did it and just backed myself and kind of got out of my comfort zone of you know moving out of home and you know, it helped me grow as a, as a human to, to where I am now. Yeah, this is my garage. Um, got board racks, I've got wetsuits, single fins and yeah, twin fins. Just to kind of keep everything fun, I think with surfing, you know, you gotta keep it fun and riding the same board over and over again and can get stale. So I've got one sentimental one. This is the board I got second in Fiji. It was kind of such a good result that you know, I thought I'd keep the board that I got second on. When you're losing a lot in competitive sport, you forget why you do it. Falling off the world tour and getting back on, you know, within the space of a year was, was a huge challenge of mine. It seemed like there was a lot of things going wrong for me. There was a lot of pressure, you know, falling off the tour, lost a lot of confidence and you start doubting yourself. And it was just a matter of, for me, I feel like reshifting my focus on why I do it and why I love doing it is because I love surfing. And I went from, I guess, being so results-based to enjoying every experience that I'm able to is something that is so important because life's too short at the end of the day. And, you know, I'm not gonna be able to do this forever and I wanna be able to create memories and also just kind of being the best version of myself and not trying to, to be someone that I'm not. I'm only human, there's, there's always times where it feels like work, but I love it too much to constantly go back to having to do it because it's my job instead of having to do it because I love it. I'm very fortunate to be able to surround myself with awesome friends and, and family and we've got great coaches and trainers. That's the one that I want you to beat. I saw the guy this morning and said, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> you know, it keeps me level-headed, it keeps me grounded, it switches me off because we, we talk about surfing but it's not competitive focused or, you know, results this and talking about it too much. It's more about having friends that just enjoy your company and, you know, I like enjoy their company so it helps to have that support and that careness and kindness around you. I've got a, a pretty strange mix of cultures in my, in my family, you know, my mum's Japanese and uh, my dad's actually Irish but born in Australia so I guess I'm Japanese, I'm Irish, I'm Australian, I'm a bit of a mix of everything and I've got the perfect balance of, of both my parents' personality. I think my mum's very 
driven and competitive and, you know, never give up attitude, while my dad's very calm and quiet and super caring. And I had, the, I had a really good balance of like, dad was such a good technical, you know, he, did, he spent a lot of time on the beach filming me and stuff and free surfs in the afternoon after school. And yeah, mum was more kind of that mental toughness coach. <laughs> At the time, I hated it. But uh, yeah, now I look back and go, you know, I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't have her uh, trying to make me tougher. This year, to be able to win world tour events representing Japan, make the top five, is a huge goal of mine. Surfing in Japan is huge at the moment, and there's the talent that's coming out of Japan is really good. When I was a kid growing up here in Australia, you know, we had a number of world tour surfers that we were able to look up to, you know, Mick Fanning, Joel Parkinson, a handful of amazing surfers that we could always look at and go, that's the level that I need to be at. I'd love to be that person to the up and coming youth of Japanese surfing. We're normal people, we make the same mistakes and have made the same mistakes that you will when you've started your competitive career. And for myself and my own surfing career, I'm always trying to find ways to improve every year, you know. A 0.1 of a percent of improvement is, is a massive gain. So what Go Beyond means to me is constantly trying to find ways to improve. No matter what level you're at, keep going and keep going until you can't go anymore. <laughs>